Life does not necessarily happen the way you want it to happen. And some of the times it could get so hard that the only thing you want is just to survive, just to live through another day. But far be it that you just think about existing alone in life. The life we live on earth is more out of our control than it is in our control. But one thing is sure, life has principles. And if you apply the right principles, you're going to get the results. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwe Mapan. In today's video, I want to speak about five things as a Christian that you need to stop doing because these things are dragging you backwards. These things are blocking you from receiving the promises of God that he has for you. Number one, don't bench God. God until it's tough. We have a tendency or a habit of allowing things to get worse before we get to God. If you are prone to the habit of allowing things to go tough before you need God, you need to stop it. You will not ever supposed to live without God. The idea of trying to bench God or keep him on the bench till things get tough is out of God's own blueprints. God did not make you so that you will be independent of him, not at any moment. That is why Christ came and he is called Emmanuel, God with us, God living inside of us, such that you never have to go anywhere without him. But most of the time, we don't prioritize God nor his presence, nor listen to him. So we go ahead trying to do things, trying to go into relationships, making contracts without his own leading. And by that, when he chokes us, that's where we want to go to God. That's where we want to pray. This is something you need to stop doing. It's blocking you from receiving all the promises of God in your life. Life wasn't promised to be easy. Why would you want to do it without the one who is the author and the finisher of your faith? Ecclesiastes says, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the lame, but time and chance happen to them all. In the natural, the race is won by the fastest runner. God is telling you, if you see life like a race, and you are trying to do everything by your effort to become the fastest runner, you're going to miss out in life. So God is not waiting for you to operate by your effort. This is not saying that you should not seek to be excellent in the things that God has called you to do. It is saying you should not be dependent on how fast you can run. On how smart you are, on how wise you are, on how educated you are, God helps us be in the right place at the right time. It is God's speed that we need. You don't need to depend on your smarts. Number two, do you feel like you can do it by yourself? Do you feel like you can do life on your own? Maybe it might not be life generally. You don't really feel like that on a general scale that you are doing life alone. What if it's about those little things in your life and you are saying to yourself, no, I don't need to disturb God on this. Why should I disturb God to pray about this relationship, you need God to do it. You feel like it's something you can handle. If you would have been able to do life by yourself perfectly, you would have no need of God because you would be a God to yourself. You would be self-sufficient. But since you can't do everything in life perfectly on your own, you need God in everything about your life. You don't need him just for your spiritual life. You need him for your romantic life. You need him for your choices. You need him for every facet of your life. And in the scriptures, Jesus said to you, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do not. Your strength is limited to the physical. Your knowledge and wit are limited. Your human connections are limited and they are weak and even frail. They can fail you at any time and they can cut off at any point. Any human being can disappoint you. No matter how much you trust or you think you know them, God alone is your sure love. He's the one that will never disappoint. He promised, I will never forsake you. Neither will I forget you. Neither will I leave you. Tell me what fruit bearing tree that a branch can bear fruit without getting nutrients from the source. Every branch of a tree that bears fruit is because it is receiving nutrients from its source. And the Bible says that Christ is you and I's vine. He's our tree. We are connected directly to him. What are we to do? Your only work is to consent to receive nutrients and nourishment from your source. And why would you think you can do without your source? Number three, don't think striving. Think to try. Don't just think about surviving or existing. Think about thriving. Think about becoming successful. A lot of Christians have come to a place that they just feel like 
They just need to survive through life. They just need to struggle from one meal to another. That is their belief because they feel hopeless in their situations and what they are facing. I'm not trying to diminish what you are going through, what you are facing, but I'm telling you, you don't need to think striving, struggling, and just existing. You need to start thinking thriving. And thriving is not a work of your efforts. Thriving is a work of livelihood. There's something, there are systems put around you that are making things work for you and you can thrive. You can't thrive just on your efforts. If you are trying to operate just with your efforts, you are trying to strive. You are trying to struggle and it's going to be a very difficult thing for you. Because by striving, you are toiling like the disciples toiled all night. They tried all their skills. This is their work. This is what they do every day. But they tried everything they have been trying. It didn't work out. Have you been in that place in your life that you've tried everything that used to work, everything that you used to do, and nothing is working out? You need to start thriving. And to thrive, you need the Savior. You need Jesus to be there, to direct you. You just need His Word. The Bible says the flesh profited nothing, but the spirit quickened. You just need the Word from God, the Word of direction, the Word of guidance, that will tell you, apply that wisdom here. Do this or do that. If it's your relationship that is trying to crumble, it can give you a word that can set everything in place. And with this, you can check out the story of Joseph, how it's summarized in the New Testament in two verses, very beautifully. These patriarchs were jealous of their brother, Joseph, and they sold him to be a slave in Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. And God gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom. So that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all of Egypt and put him in charge of the palace. All through this story, you can see that Joseph's life has been hovering around God. If you depend on just your knowledge and then you just need a bit of God to add to what you know or who you are, you are not going to go so far. You will only struggle and strive and do so little. Number four, don't be unintentional. The God you serve is an intentional God. He is intentional in every work, in every detail, in everything that he has done from creation till redemption. God has been very intentional and he made you in his image so that you will carry his likeness and be intentional with your life. Why do you live life? If you want to serve God, you don't need to be one foot here and one foot there. I say this to people, if you take God as your father, then you should be able to listen to him. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. But you can't take him and call him your father when you have no relationship with him. It only takes a child who has close intimacy with the father to receive things from the father without fear. Not as if the father doesn't want to give, but the child on his or her path could be filled with fear. What if I go to my father and then they will rebuke me? But that is because you are not close. You are not intentional with your commitment to fellowship with your father. If you start prioritizing the fellowship you have with your father, this is what will bless your life and transform your life. You need to start being very intentional about your pursuit of him. Like Paul said, everything that has been gained to me, I count them, but don't. I want to know him. I want more of him. And if you want more of him, it does not just come based on nothing. It comes based on you being intentional. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion toward Him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let Him fill you with excitement as you serve Him. This should be your posture. Number five, do not boast in yourself. The one thing that people tend to do is when God blesses them, they now come off to boast. Everything you have in life is given to you. Everything, your breath is given. Salvation is given to you free of charge. It's not through your works. It's not through your keeping of the law. So why would you boast? Being able to follow God is a gift of grace. There's nothing to boast about being a close child of God because He made it possible for you to be close. Your fasting and prayer only enhances your fellowship with Him. But that's not the reason you got close to Him. You got close to Him because He made it possible. He has given you riches or wealth. It's not of your own self-doing. So if God has given it to you, it is God's favor and you don't need to boast. So every bit of good in you 
is from God. That is why scripture says that every good and perfect gift is from the Father of life. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful. God makes people to become people of value. God makes anybody that becomes something to become who they are. So by the time a man starts seeing himself, that is pride coming in. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom. All the powerful boast in their power. All the rich boast in their riches. That is the Lord saying. Don't boast in anything you have. Boast in the fact that you know him. You know that he is your source. You know that everything you have is given through him. I hope this video has been of benefit to you. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section what you've been reminded in this video or what you've learned if you do not know it before. It will be my pleasure to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. Share this video with others. Don't forget to watch the next video. Thank you.